For more on the U.S. economy and its outlook for the next year, I spoke to David Dollar. David is a senior fellow in the John L. Thornton China Center at the Brookings Institution. I began by asking about the biggest economic developments in 2017. I think the most important development in 2017 is the U.S. has really fully recovered from the global financial crisis. Uh, you see that in the, the starting to normalize interest rates by the Fed, by GDP performance that'll be close to 2.5% for the whole year, which is about the potential growth rate of the U.S. economy, low unemployment. So we're really back to normal. I think that's the important headline for 2017. So do you see this as a start of a few more robust years, or should we kind of watch and wait and see what happens as economic policies continue to unfold? Well, I think there's a reasonable chance that some of these trends will continue. We should be able to continue to grow at about 2.5 percent with low unemployment. The Fed will keep normalizing interest rates, uh, so they'll rise. And the amount of job creation is going to slow down because we had a backlog of underemployed workers, and now we've pretty much taken care of that. So the demographics of the U.S. are such that there'll be slower labor force growth going forward, but that's because of the demographics, not because of a shortfall of demand. Now, as you mentioned, unemployment is low, but wage growth is still sluggish, and inflation is still below the Fed's 2 percent target. How do you see those perhaps changing in the coming year? So there's a lot of debate about the labor market. I do think workers, to some extent, have been cowed by the whole experience of the global crisis, and globalization puts downward pressure on a lot of wages. So even though unemployment's low, you don't see people bargaining for higher wages or jumping from job to job. There's still quite a bit of nervousness. That may slowly change, but some of this is probably just the new era of globalization, and so we can probably survive with a lower unemployment rate, which is good, and no big acceleration of inflation. Now, we know that job creation was one of the goals of the tax reform plan, this major tax reform that passed. Um, in terms of the best and worst case scenarios for how that's going to impact the economy in the coming year, what's your take? Well, I don't see much chance for it to really increase employment. You know, I think our demographics are such that you know, there's a limit to how much employment we're going to have going forward. Perhaps with higher wage growth, you can pull some more people into the labor market, but I don't think that'll be a big macroeconomic effect. So the question really is, can this significantly increase productivity growth by raising investment in a sustained way? That's the hope. And so if it works, you should see higher productivity growth, and, and then maybe we'll get more wage uh, increases for workers. Uh, but it'll probably take a few years before we know whether this is really working. Now, as we saw, turning to the central bank, as we saw Fed Chief Janet Yellen steer the country through its economic crisis, and now a new Fed Chief is going to be taking over in February. Can we expect any changes in policy, or will it be more along the same? Well, I think first we should give Janet Yellen a big shout out that she did a terrific job taking us through a difficult period. Now, Jay Powell has always voted with Janet Yellen. I mean, he's been on the board for years. He's always voted with Janet Yellen. So he seems to be a moderate voice that will continue the kind of policies we've seen. I think he'll be, a, I think he's a good choice if it's not going to be a replacement. You know, if Janet Yellen's not continuing, then I think that was a good choice. Probably policies will be similar, perhaps a little bit more deregulation of banks, but nothing radical. Now, let's talk trade deals now. We know that NAFTA and other trade deals have been in the spotlight, either for renegotiation or, for a lot of them, President Trump said he thinks they're a terrible deal and wants to throw them out altogether. How do you see his, perhaps his strategy, adapting or changing in the coming year? Well, I think that that uh, instinct toward protectionism is the biggest risk hanging over the U.S. economy. Uh, I don't agree that these deals have hurt the United States. I think NAFTA has basically been a positive for the three countries involved. I was in favor of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which would have opened up markets in 12 economies, including the U.S. So the president has pulled us out of TPP. He's threatening to blow up NAFTA. I think that would be a big mistake. Basically, the Canadians and the Mexicans are not willing to agree to the kind of dramatic changes the U.S. wants, so the administration is going to have to decide, do they accept small changes or do they blow the whole thing up? And that would have very bad consequences for the U.S. economy. So I think you'll have business and, and many Republicans and Democrats, too, 
telling Trump not to do this, and hopefully he won't.